Well, howdy all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today I wanted to do an update on the character I League started. Now, I've been playing a little bit less than I'd originally intended just because I've been feeling a bit run down. I'm about at the 95% of Atlas completion and about the 30% through the Awakener bonus currently. Uh, so, the original build plan was an Ignite Fireball Proliferation character that relied upon Flame Surge for bossing. Flame Surge was nerfed a lot between the initial spoiled version and what went live. Uh, so the version that went live had an extra line of text on it uh, that says your damage modifiers don't apply to this burning ground. So that prevented double dipping, but ultimately the numbers on it were balanced around it double dipping. I'm still using it because there's nothing really better, uh, but it is not an, it is not a high performing uh, gem. It's just something that's thrown in as a bit of extra damage on bosses. So that's the flame surge issue. Uh, it's still sort of just okay to use. Uh, but if I was still using a staff, I would be using a traditional six link instead. So in terms of other equipment that I'm using, uh, the key defensive powerhouse th that I'm using is the Brass Dome. Brass Dome is a pure defensive armor. And the idea of Brass Dome is that it gives you enough defense that you don't need to invest heavily in defense elsewhere. At least that's the way that I'm using it. So we have 365% increased armor, local increased armor, and 5% to all max alley resistances. These roll, these have roll ranges. I believe it's 350 to 400 for the increased armor. You don't really mind what that is, obviously higher the better, but the one that matters is 5% to all max alley reses. Brass Dome is incredible. I think for a lot of caster builds, it's going to be best in slot. For a long period, I was trying to use a Crusader Explode chest here, and that was just a mistake. Uh, Brass Dome is, is the way to go. Uh, it provides you with a tremendous amount of defense in one package. Uh, it does have a serious drawback. Strength provides no bonus to maximum life, which generally means that this is actually a negative 100 life piece of gear, uh, because if you've got uh, 200 strength, which is pretty typical for a caster, then you'd be getting 100 base life from that. But uh, the other defensive benefits on it are so good that it's worth it. Additionally, take no extra damage from critical strikes is an incredible mod. Uh, it does mean that I've got a wasted mod on my shield, but it's, I'm still fine with that. So... Uh, that's the Brass Dome. Uh, this is a trade league only really item. There's no way to target farm it. It's the same rarity tier as Chiffon's wrappings. Uh, and so it's not something that's easy to get your hands on. Uh, but in trade, it's pretty easy to pick up for like 50 or 60 C with the 5% perfect roll. Once you've got it, uh, it's a case of a matter of corrupting it and then using Elishar's method to six link it, uh, which requires a bunch of tainted fusings and tainted dual absorbs. And once you've done that, uh, you're fine. Notice I got a lucky Vile hit on that, 6% uh, increased max life. Uh, you probably won't get that, but and you might even ruin a Brass Stone or two trying to corrupt it. But ultimately, I think it's worth using Vile Orbs rather than using the uh, rather than using the 30% corrupt beast. Save those for more expensive chess pieces. Okay, so that is the uh, that is the key defensive thing that we've made. The second thing is changing to a shield. Now, I am using a heat-attuned tower shield. I feel like this is the best base for a shield for a character that's going to have a modest investment in armor. So this is a lower version armor-wise and block-wise than a colossal tower shield, uh, but it has the really juicy line, Scorch enemies when you block their damage. Now, this is currently Crusader-influenced. Uh, don't really pay attention to that. My goal here was that I wanted to make this Shaper-influenced. Because it's a Heist-exclusive base, the only way you can make this Shaper Influenced is through using the Harvest Craft that, re that reforges the influence on an item. However, uh, I actually hit a fairly good mod on this when I Conqueror Exalted it. I just used the cheapest Conqueror Exalts that were available, which was a Crusader Exalt at the time. It only cost me 50 Chaos for the Crusader Exalt. And then I happened to hit that 1% increased damage per 1% uh, per chance to block attack damage, which is a really good roll on it. You also notice the fairly unusual 2985 to armor during soul gain prevention. This mod is amazing. This mod is amazing on this build because you're often, you're at your most danger when you are casting Vile Fireball or just after you've cast it, when you're sort of moving forward through a pack. And so that is a really, really solid extra defense uh, because the first thing that hits you after you get your soul gain prevention is going to trigger a cast when damage taken Molten Shell and having an extra 3000 base armor is going to make that Molten Shell better. So, other changes that we've made, we have a Cast When Damage Taken Molten Shell setup. 
Uh, our armor is in the, uh, with determination on, I'll just check if I've got, no, I don't have determination on at the moment. So I change my auras around sometimes. So determination off, it's uh, 5,300. Determination on, it's 12,252. But that comes at a big decrease in damage dealt. Uh, so that means I'm turning off malevolence, which is a 20% more multiplier to my damage. I flip between the two. Uh, generally speaking, for bossing, I use malevolence and manually dodge the boss attacks. For mapping, I use determination because damage is more unpredictable and spiky. Uh, otherwise, I'm also using max level vitality and max level clarity as well. Uh, and I've picked up a couple of clusters on the tree to that effect. Otherwise, gear is mostly just uh, pretty pretty much mediocre stuff. Uh, just life, uh, life and move speed on the boots. I actually don't even have any resists on them except for the fact that they're two-tone boots. These boots are terrible. They need to be upgraded. Uh, this is a set of Delve Gloves that have Ignite. You inflict deal damage 10% faster with okay life and resists. Uh, nothing special at all. Uh, this is Beric's Respite. This is really good. We'll get to that in a sec. Uh, this is just a bad ring that really needs an upgrade. This is a terrible amulet that needs an upgrade. And this helmet is an incursion helmet that just happens to have 100 life and a bunch of cold resistance, plus a small amount of fizz from hits taken as cold damage. So basically not much investment in gear other than the key things. Beric's Respite, let's talk quickly about this. When you kill a shocked enemy, inflict an equivalent shock on each nearby enemy. This is amazing. Uh, I have a fair bit of scaling in this build of effects of non-damaging ailments. I have these nodes because they're close to things that benefit Ignite, uh, and they end up just being really, really, really good. So what this means is that I am inflicting shocks with my fireballs on trash monsters. The trash monsters die, and this then inflicts massive shocks uh, on the real monsters around them. And this causes great proliferation chains. In addition, we've got the same thing for Ignites. Now the Ignite side of Beric's Respite is still significant, but it's actually not as good as the Shock one. And that's because of a Megalomaniac cluster jewel I'm using. Uh, this cluster setup needs to change, but for the moment I've got Fan the Flames, which causes your, which is another form of Ignite proliferation. And also I've got Electric Presence, 20% uh, increased effective shock. The, the Wrath effect is not relevant to me. Uh, and that's just because it was like, I could only afford a, a fan the flames plus something else. Okay. I couldn't afford fan the flames plus something great. And then we got unholy grace, which I've taken just because 10% cast speed is 10% cast speed. It's, it's worth a point. Uh, but basically this is six points for fan the flames. Uh, and then the other two points in it are good. Oh, oh sorry. They're, they're good enough to, to justify taking, but they're not something that pushes me towards that cluster. Other changes we've made to the tree, uh, we have unspecced all of the staff nodes. Uh, this is universal uh, This is universal block or star, uh, staff or shield, so it still works. Uh, so we are taking that. And then we also have a number of, um, we've also dropped the other staff cluster that we had here and picked up this shield cluster instead, which is also just a reasonable amount of block. Also solves some of the resistances, um, putting a bit less pressure on gear. Otherwise, the tree is mostly what we'd originally planned, uh, and we've also picked up the entirety of the Sovereignty cluster. Uh, Sovereignty has been really, really good, and I think I may even want to pick up a second cluster along those lines at some point. So this is the passive tree as it stands. Uh, Elementalist-wise, we ended up going Heart of Destruction. Uh, Heart of Destruction because of 60% increased area of effect when you don't have Convergence. This is fantastic for Chaos Explosions, I, I believe. It seems to work on them. Uh, and also just for the fact that during mapping, you want that area of effect. The area of effect is really good when you're mapping. The other thing that was not in the original build that was really important was the very simple jewel, Poacher's Aim. Uh, projectiles pierce an additional target is fantastic. Otherwise, uh, that's where we're looking at at the moment. Let's run a map and demonstrate it. Uh, this is an estuary map, tier 14. And there's a good chance I'll die in here, but I'll try not to. Uh, I'm still a little on the squishy side but I generally can kill things before they kill me. And that's the key thing. This will showcase both the strengths and the weaknesses of the current uh, current setup. Uh, so you'll see that the clear is, ooh, the clear is really so, uh, really strong. Like you hit, you hit a pack and everything is sort of around it starts to die. Uh, this is with us in defensive mode. So we're using determination rather than malevolence. And you'll see that when I jump into the Krangle zone, I'm usually killing things before they can do that much to me. 
Uh, okay, let's do these rituals as well. Rituals are always fun. Uh, as far as rituals go, this build is great as long as you get stable at the, at the start of the fight. So you've got to sort of get through that first start. And then once you do, it's uh, a case of the monsters all sort of kill each other. Your corpse explode one in five of them. And that will cause everything else to sort of go splat. And oops, I thought there I had Val Fireball up. I didn't actually check. So that's a mistake that should have killed me. Uh, I like making mistakes on, on videos like this. It gives a gives a sense of what you have to do when things don't go right. And now a whole bunch of skill gems I'm leveling in my offhand just to sell uh, hitting levels. Uh, here's a here's one of those things that's interesting. Now this is a fight that would be a lot easier with malevolence instead of with uh, instead of having up our defensive setup. Uh, but ultimately, if I use malevolence during mapping, I do tend to die enough for it to be annoying. Jumping into the Krangleverse again, and we'll get a whole bunch of monsters dying, sort of popping off screen, and we'll do all of the looting afterwards as you normally do with that zone. Uh, pick up all the stuff while we're running back towards the next, uh, next section of the map. We haven't been to yet. Uh, oh, we got it. So exiles are actually, like, for something that's normally a joke in the game, uh, exiles feel like they put up a lot more of a fight on this, on this than they normally do. Jump back into the Krangleverse. So what I like doing there is I cast my Vile Fireball first, then I am immediately shift over. Uh, and potentially also throw a quick Molten Shell up. I mentioned that I've got a Cast when Damage Taken Molten Shell. I also have a separate Molten Shell, uh, which I am manually casting, uh, and that is certainly keeping me alive a lot. And once you see, once a, uh, once a monster gets corpse exploded, uh, you'll see a big chain reaction where everything around it dies. Uh, that's part of the... That's the way that the Beric's Respite proliferation tends to work. Uh, so Fan the Flames will proliferate that to everything around the monster at the time that it ignites nearby enemies. And then Beric's Respite, when those monsters die, will proliferate it further. Uh, that's why I'm using both of them. Uh, additionally, my Fireball has Ignite Proliferation support on it as well. That causes corpses of Fireball-killed monsters to stay burning. Uh, that may actually not be the correct support gem anymore uh, since I've had Beric's Respite going, uh, but um, it still does enough extra damage that it's not a wasted support gem. And we'll just grab all this loot. It's that div card. Oh, the standoff, the Rustic Sash unique. I didn't even realize that. Uh, I'd forgotten that card existed. Uh, don't like having a ghost alive when you start a ritual because they can just be, they're just scary monsters. Uh, they can do some really nasty stuff. I'm using decoy totem in sketchier fights, uh, but here you can see the popcorn chain reactions. So one monster chaos explodes, it ignites everything around it, and then it proliferates and keeps killing stuff. Uh, that's the end of this. We've got a couple of things left over. Rolling Magma, no. Polished Metamorph Scarab. Awaken Sextants are good. Uh, I think our best choice here is going to be this. Uh, then if we've got enough, we'll uh, we'll defer the better, uh, the better stuff, which is just basically those two, isn't it? Or that. No, that's better. That's better than that. And if we've got enough left over, we'll defer that as well. Perfect. That will do. All right, and we've got a... No, nah, didn't get a uh, plus one socket on that. Uh, and these are just uh, maps I'll run in the future at some point. Okay, let's go to the map boss and showcase the limitations of this build, which is the bossing. Uh, this boss will take a little while, even though it's one of the easier ones on the Atlas. And we'll just get ourselves over a little over 200 here. Okay, that's enough for there. I think that's enough Krangle Versing for this map. Um, so as you can see, you kill stuff real fast in the Krangle Verse. Uh, that's one of the that's one of the draws to this build, I think, in this in this league environment, is that uh, you get to kill things. You kill things in the Krangle Verse fast enough that your squishiness doesn't matter all that much. Now that's a softcore attitude. I am dying a lot, 
Uh, so, you know, I'm only level 91 for a reason. I'm dying a lot. Uh, but you can definitely get a lot of stuff. Uh, you can definitely... Oh, there we go. There's a death. I knew there was going to be one on the video. Uh, that was just due to me mistiming the Vile Fireball. And when you're at sort of 215, uh, 220 stacks, you don't really have much leniency with that. Glad I can show the death, though. Uh, it, gives a, it gives you a sense of how quickly things go wrong when they do go wrong. Uh, and then we've just got the map boss, and that I think is the end of this map. Yeah, here it is. So we'll put up the um, we'll put up the good old idiot portal there in case I do something really stupid and misplay the boss mechanics. Um, but you'll see the oh, actually that was faster than expected. I I must have chaos exploded a um, one of the ads, and that that chaos explosion got the boss down a lot while he was also affected by the debuff. Now, Maven can be quite impactful in these here. So we're just going to get out of there. And this gives you a sense, like, I think people who are um, experienced with Endgame have a bit of a sense as to the degree of hit points this boss has, uh, and that that was a slow kill. Uh, you certainly can get the bosses down, but it's very difficult to do 10-way Maven fights and the like. Uh, also, that was with that was not with determination. That was with malevolence. Okay, so that's an update on where we are with the fireballer. Uh, in terms of things that we would want to get from here, so the key thing is going to be getting uh, upgrades on the megalomaniac that I'm using. So what I want to see is a situation where I've got cluster jewels, where I have a chaos cluster jewel first that has an unspeakable gifts notable in it. Unspeakable gifts is the uh, is the notable that causes chaos explosions. It's only uh, only a 10% chance for Chaos Explosions, uh, but that's a starting point. Then we will have two Megalomaniacs. One of them will have Fan the Flames and Unspeakable Gifts as well. So those are expensive and rare. Uh, it's just a matter of finding them. When, when I've got like 10 exalts to my name, I'll start trading for them. Uh, and the other one will have Unspeakable Gifts in conjunction with just other good nodes. Doesn't need to be specifically Fan the Flames, just things that are good. And that's where we'd be looking at going. Then at that point, we can drop Obliteration entirely. We can then replace Obliteration with a pure fire damage caster wand. This will not be a traditional caster wand. A lot of caster wands want plus one to fire spells, plus one to all spells, uh, and then other mods that are okay. No, what we want is percentage increased fire damage and percentage increased damage over time multiplier. So these are different stats to what most people want. And as a result, uh, it should be pretty easy to source in a trade league to have pretty good ones. Uh, and then that will put us in a situation where we can have a lot more damage on the weapon than we do now. We have no damage on the weapon currently, uh, so replacing Obliteration with something with damage on it means that when we do get a Chaos Explosion, it'll be much more impactful than it is now. Anyway, that's an update. Uh, May of Olobs have interesting results, and I will see you around. Uh, if you want a current path of building, I will put one in the channel below, oh, sorry, in the description below. But like I say, don't copy it directly. Uh, you know, Don't try and go exactly the same way I've done. Uh, make your own changes to it and work out, uh, you know, address the things that you find are weaknesses and that you find are strengths uh, and play to those. Uh, otherwise, have fun and I will see you around.